Hello, super fans, and welcome back to another round of Vicious Violence on Grudge Match Unlimited, the show where characters who have never and likely will never meet in canon can come together to beat the hell out of each other. Today's match is going to be brutal to the extreme, as two shape-shifting mass murderers are about to collide. By popular demand, this episode is crossing the Marvel Comics Agent of Chaos, the symbiotic psychopath, Carnage, against the biomass whirlwind of destruction from Prototype, it's Alex Mercer. A lot of similarities between these two characters in terms of the powers they bring to bear, both being shapeshifters who don't shapeshift in the way of more classical shapeshifters like Mystique, who can turn into other people, or Martian Manhunter, who can do the same, but they shapeshift in terms of being able to turn their body into living weapons of all different types of blades, whips, tentacles, and the like, and they use this in order to kill vast amounts of people. Now while this would seem to put them both on the villain side of things, and that is certainly true for Carnage, he has been one of Spider-Man's most virulent villains for quite some time, Alex Mercer is not actually considered a villainous character, he's the protagonist of the prototype game. And though he kills a lot of people, it is seemingly in service of a greater good, a lot of the people he kills are military or government personnel who caused the viral outbreak that he is seeking to find the answers for. So taking a look at these two characters individually, starting with Carnage, created in 1991, real name of Cletus Cassidy, but didn't actually appear as the character Carnage till a year later in 1992. Now, Cletus Cassidy was a psychopath throughout most of his life from a very young age, and as an adult, he found himself in prison for his murders. And he was the cellmate of Eddie Brock, who is famed for being the first host of the Venom symbiote, after Peter Parker, of course. When the Venom symbiote eventually found Eddie Brock and broke him out of prison, at that moment, it spawned and gave birth to a new symbiote, which latched on to Cletus Cassidy, and that formed the villain that we know of as Carnage. Now, as Carnage, he has all the same powers that Venom possesses in terms of greatly enhanced superhuman strength, Spider-Man-like speed, agility, organic webbing that he can produce. Symbiotes have extreme durability in terms of the amount that they can protect the host who is wearing them. They can withstand great amounts of blunt force trauma and a lot of piercing weapons as well, not completely, but to a very high degree. Symbiotes have a Weakness, however, against fire and sonic-based weaponry. But even if the person wearing the symbiote does get injured, the symbiote can heal from massive amounts of damage the person within, including regenerating lost tissue. In fact, Cletus Cassidy was regenerated from a severed head at one point by his symbiote. So massive regenerative healing brought on by the symbiote as well. And then of course Carnage's most prominent ability is his symbiote shape-shifting, where he can turn his extremities into bladed weapons, he can form claws, he can form knives, swords, he can have whip-like tendrils coming out of virtually any part of his body that he can shove right through people, and he can use these to great effect to create lots of carnage, as his name implies, and he uses them to further his desire for mass murder. Alex Mercer, created in 2009 as the main protagonist of the first prototype game, he was infected by what was known as the blacklight virus. Now this virus killed his body and then reanimated it and turned his entire body from the organic structure of flesh and blood and bones into what is known as biomass. Now this biomass works a lot like the symbiote from Carnage in that it can shape shift and responds to Alex's mental commands. So he can shape his entire body into virtually anything he wants, either to look like other people or to create weapons, knives, bladed weapons, whip-like tendrils. He can even form it into armor or shields. He can turn it into hammer fists that he can use to smash really heavy objects. In addition to this shape shifting, he also has increased physical skills. His strength has been increased greatly, 
It's never exactly stated how strong he is, but he is seen to be lifting tanks and throwing them great distances with relative ease. Now, most tanks can be anywhere between 60 and 100 tons, so this would probably put his strength level on par with that of Carnage. He also possesses superhuman speed, agility, he can use this to run straight up walls at full speed, he can glide on the air, so not really have powered flight, but he can glide great distances by sort of ejecting his biomass to give him propulsion through the air. He can also heal, although it's not even really technically healing because his biomass body doesn't sustain damage in the same way as most people's bodies do. Any kind of damage that he gets, he can just, the wound will automatically close. He doesn't have internal organs, he doesn't bleed, he can't really sustain normal injury. Really the only way to cause damage to Alex Mercer is to sort of cut off parts of his body that will reduce in him losing biomass. He can take a lot of bullets and they don't hurt him too much, but if those bullets are tearing off pieces of his biomass, he will eventually start to lose power as his biomass reserves start to deplete. He can be harmed to slight degrees by fire and electricity, but again, it's mostly just by way of damaging his biomass to the point where he can't use it anymore or completely knocking it off of his body. So having taken a look at these two characters and the vast similarities between them, it's time to decide what would happen if they were to ever go symbiote against biomass. The winner's going to be Alex Mercer. The biggest fatal flaw that Carnage has is that despite all of the powers that the symbiote has, there is still a frail human body underneath it all. Now, even though the symbiote can heal any damage that Cletus Cassidy sustains, that's not always going to be instantaneous regeneration. For a certain amount of time, Cletus Cassidy had two prosthetic legs when he had been effectively cut in half, and even though he had the symbiote all through the time that he had these prosthetic legs and he was still going out there causing mischief and killing people, it took a good long while for the symbiote to totally regenerate his legs. And that's not even bringing to bear the notion of the symbiote weakness to fire and to sonic-based weaponry. Now, in more recent comics, he seemed to have lost the sonic weakness when he sort of merged with the magic of the Darkhold, but it's still pretty much believed that the fire weakness remains, as that is a very common weakness to all symbiotes. It really breaks down their basic cellular structure. And so that fire damage is going to be much more of a problem for Carnage than it would be for Mercer. Mercer can be harmed to a small degree by fire, but not nearly as bad as the symbiotes of the Marvel Universe are. And when it comes right down to it, there's virtually nothing that Carnage could do to Mercer that would really impair him all that much at all. Carnage's go-to moves are to stab, to rend, to break people apart, to cut them to pieces, and while he could potentially cut off some of Mercer's biomass, it's going to take a lot in order to really impair Mercer, and he's not just going to stand back and let Carnage do that, he's going to be attacking himself, and Carnage is likely to be brought down by the damage that he would sustain from Mercer, as Mercer would be able to penetrate given enough force, the symbiote surrounding Cassidy, and injure that person underneath the symbiote a lot more quickly than Carnage would be able to cut off and deplete Mercer's biomass. So in the end, Mercer is going to be able to affect more damage onto Cletus Cassidy through the symbiote than Carnage would be able to on Mercer, and that's going to give Mercer the win of this grudge match unlimited. So message me down below, let me know what you think of the outcome of this fight, and of course any suggestions for future grudge matches. We'll see you next time on the next edition of Grudge Match Unlimited.